Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. And with us once again is Kristen Quinn, the Speaker for the City Council of New York, running for mayor. I had the pleasure of first meeting her at Ezri and Gabi Freelander's house for Tubishvat, and that was a joyous day. And on Tisha B'Av, uh, she had her Hatzalah moment. So welcome back to the program. Good to see you, by the way, in West Hampton Synagogue last week as well. Yes, yes, which I was just, a, what a beautiful synagogue, and the rabbi and everyone was so welcoming. I, I had a lovely, lovely time. It was great to see you and your wife there. Thank you. And yesterday was hot. It was Tisha B'Av. Oh it's God. a day which is, you know, an unbearable day with the heat. And yep. you had you had solemn moment. What happened where the city couldn't do and bring a rescue ambulance uh, for over 34 minutes? That's all it was there a moment. What's going on? First of all, let's so have we, what happened yesterday. Uh, so we had a press conference yesterday, myself and Councilmember Diana Arena and activists in Williamsburg about garbage-related uh, issues. And towards the end of the press conference, a, a young girl who's an intern for Council Member Reina fainted. Now, thank God when she fell forward, somebody was in front of her, he broke her fall. Otherwise, it would have been even worse. But it was a very scary thing because this young girl falls. She was unconscious for a little bit. She told us she blacked out. We had her down on the ground. We called 911. Now, also, thank God, one of the detectives who travels with me is a trained EMT. So he immediately got his bag. He took her pulse. He gave her oxygen. He put ice packs on her. And we're waiting. And she's down on the ground. Myself, Councilmember Marina, Detective John Madden, we're helping her. And she's only 17, so she's very, very nervous. But she's very pale. She's hot. She's weak. We asked her twice, would you like to, could you stand up? Because we were going to put her in an air-conditioned car. She didn't even think she could stand up. So now the time is, you know, going. And it's 10 minutes. And you're supposed to have a response for the highest level things in about eight minutes, which I'm not saying this was the highest level thing. You know what I mean? It wasn't a heart attack or a gunshot or anything. But when we're at about 15 minutes, we, you know, a little over 10, 10 minutes, actually, I call, have my staff call City Hall, call the mayor's office. This is headed in a bad direction. Then time is going. Nothing is happening. So I did two things, made two telephone calls. I have two telephone calls happened. One, I called Ray Kelly personally on a cell phone, and I said, I need assistance. And Howard Pollack in my office at City Hall called Hatsola. Now, we waited 31 minutes. I think the NY, uh, the fire department ambulance got there after Hatsola left. It was probably about 33, 35 minutes. Hatsola got there within minutes. It was three or four minutes after we placed the call to Hatsola when they arrived. Joseph Levy and Muddy Klein arrived in minutes. Now, this would be remarkable Amazing. any day. It's more remarkable because the city had not responded, and it's more remarkable because it was Tisha and, and, and they were And fasting. they were fasting. They were fasting, right? They were in synagogue, and they left immediately because, of course, the highest calling is always to help save a life. And I just want to thank them and Hot Sola so much, and also Howard Pollock on my staff, who had the wisdom, because of his experience with Hot Sola when we were waiting and waiting, to call Hot Sola. And they really, they saved the day, and thank God the young girl, she was just dehydrated, but they needed to get her to uh, the hospital. She needed an IV, and they really took care of it. And I'm very, very grateful uh, for what they do. You know, 70,000 calls annually, available 24 hours a day seven days a week. My new joke that is I'm uh, hot toll is my new American Express card. I don't want to leave home without them. I want to have them everywhere I go. And you can even use them. People even use them in their home, too. They're in the home and out of the home. You can never go anywhere without having hot toll's number. But the question I have for you is you're the speaker. You call. You call in all your political chits. You call all the right people. And despite that, it takes over 34 minutes. Can you imagine the average person that doesn't have the clout that you have? If you took right. 34 minutes for you, imagine what it would take for somebody else. Well, that's, that's what's going through your head, you know what I mean? That is one of the things when it was all over uh, that went through my head. I mean, absolutely. Now, yesterday, after I got back to City Hall, I met with the deputy, the deputy mayor and the fire commissioner. And I know your listeners are going to think immediately this must have to do with the 911 call system, which is having problems. It did not. The 911 call system worked. That was not the problem yesterday. The problem yesterday was the high volume of calls because of the heat wave. And just to, to put it in perspective, on every day we usually have, say, 3,300 to 3,500. 
Uh, day before yesterday, we had 4,000 calls. So yesterday was also going to be a high-volume day. They weren't prepared. They didn't have enough ambulances out on the street. So 911 got the call, but they didn't have enough ambulances to respond. So when I met with the deputy mayor and the fire commissioner yesterday, I made it very clear, first and foremost, we have to get more ambulances out there. We have to get more ambulances out there until this heat wave is over, as many as we possibly can. Two, we need to look at the issue of whether we need to expand the ambulance fleet overall, even beyond what we have. And then three, we probably need to set a standard for the lower level non-life-threatening calls, right? Because the highest level 911 calls, they have to, the goal is to get there in seven to eight minutes. They don't have that same kind of a standard for the lower one. No, no one could think 31 minutes is acceptable. So let me ask you this question that's going through my mind as you're speaking, and I saw the accounts and your front page, Daily News, and other media. The question, though, is is that if, and I understand, there was a lot of people re, that were calling 911 that had heat problems, other issues. So why isn't there a contingency plan to even call volunteer groups like Hudson? Why should somebody wait 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50, whatever the number is? If you're too busy, they know they're not going to get there in a half hour or more. It's not life-threatening, but it can be. I, well, that's high. the other thing. So why, why, say, why know, isn't there a contingency plan? But what starts off as non-life-threatening could be, actually, thank God she's fine, but in the course of the time when we were there, the Detective Madden, you know, said her pulse changed. He then called it in, and that's one of the things that upgraded it in the status and eventually got the city ambulance to come, but still hot solar came first. That's another point I raised yesterday. We have to do more coordination with the voluntary ambulances. I think that'd be great because at a moment where everybody is taking here, you had twenty-four fire ambulances that were all busy emergencies. Right. It was a busy day, so it would make sense to have a coordinator to call somebody else. Because why should somebody Absolutely. suffer? And it will save taxpayer money, taxpayers' money. Look, might we meet, need to buy more ambulances for the city of New York? Based on my experience yesterday and my follow-up meeting with the fire commissioner and the deputy mayor, I think we do, but. If we utilize volunteers mm -hmm. better, we might need to reduce that number, and that's a savings to taxpayers as well. There's no reason when there are people out there who want to serve, who are qualified to serve, that we don't give them that honor of really coordinating with them and working with them. No, I think it's an excellent idea to have coordination with the volunteer groups that are out there in communities and maybe have that part of the database where if right. everything is tied up, then perhaps the volunteers should be called. Absolutely. And, and Deb, you know, I just actually am on my way back from uh, visiting with um, uh, a, uh, a, a camp and a school, the yeshiva out in Far Rockaway. And what some of the folks were saying to me there was the same thing based on their experience in Sandy, that they felt Hatsola in Rockaway and the other community-based groups in Far Rockaway were prepared to do more if there had been greater coordination and more, perhaps, resources and information given to them. So this is a message that I, I as mayor, and now as speaker, really am taking in because there is no reason that we shouldn't have New Yorkers working together as the biggest and strongest team we possibly can. And in, in two days, I've seen and heard examples of that uh, in two different ways. Exactly. And had Sulla's always there, and they don't care who you are. They were there no. in 9-11, as we were speaking about. They were there yesterday when they were called to duty. Whenever there's a need, they're there to help people and save lives. And I think Hatzal and groups like them need to be incorporated more into the system. I'm glad we have this chat, and hopefully that's going to be the case in New York, so nobody has to wait 30 minutes no. or no. more. And you know what? You need a, med a certified, qualified medical person to pick you up. And if we have those resources... In the volunteer network like Hatsola, we need to use them and be grateful for them. And you mentioned 9-11. One of the two gentlemen yesterday, again, I want to thank Joseph Le Levy and Muddy Klein, who came out. One of them, I'm not, I am not know which one, maybe both, but one made a point to me. He had actually been a first responder at 9-11. So these are individuals who really show up every time we need them, and shame on us if we're not asking them enough. Chris Quinn, thank you. We look forward to having a much longer conversation on some of the other issues, but we appreciate you here with us, and you saw firsthand the 
Hatzal of what they can do, what volunteers can do to make us a greater city. And thank you for sharing with us your Hatzal moment. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned.